All right. So I will um, I will go through these, and I'm going to be recording here, obviously, so you can see where maybe you went wrong. So average acceleration from zero to four. So from zero to four, we're talking about that stretch of the graph right there. We're talking about average acceleration on a VT graph, so we're talking slope. And the slope is rise over run, so how much does it go down? It goes down 2, 4, 6, 8. Down 8 and over. And 0 to 4 is obviously 4, so that's going to be minus 2. A. All right, you're finding slope. If you're still having trouble finding slope, come and see me or ask for help at another time, and we'll get that solved for you. A bar from 10 to 16. So 10 to 16 is the curved part. But because it's A bar, you're finding the average slope. So you can actually connect the dots. Average over that interval. Karen, are you watching here? So I'm at 0, 0 minus minus 8. So that's going to be up 8. And over from 10 to 16 is clearly going to be 6. 16 minus 10. 8 over 6 is? C, 1.33. All right? How'd we do? Lots of people got that. Delta D from 0 to 4 seconds. So remember, displacement on a velocity time graph, we're talking to there to 4. We're talking the, between the graph and the uh, axis. And so now we're talking about a rectangle. And a triangle, right? And the rectangle is 4 long by 2 high, so that's going to be 8, right? Like times width. And the triangle is from 0 to 4, that's 4. The height is from 2 to 10, that's 8. So 4 times 8, 32 divided by 2 is 16. Add them together, 24. I do. It, I, I try, it's hard. Yeah. Yes, I know it is kind of, you almost have to take a ruler and do it yourself. Yeah. If I was creating it by hand, I probably would do that, but can't. Yeah. Excellent point, I just can't solve it. I've tried. Delta D from 0 to 10. So we are talking about that there, which we know is 24. Then we're talking about this rectangle here. And then we're talking about that little guy. And then here's where everybody always makes the mistake. And we're talking about that guy there. And remember, that guy there is negative because it's below, right? So 24, this rectangle here is 1, 2, 3 by 2 is going to be 6. This little guy right here, that's 7. We're going to assume that's 7 half. So that's going to be a half is the base. The height is 2. So half times 2 is? One, but half of that, because it's a triangle, so we're talking 0.5. And then the negative part, so that's going to be 1, 2 and a half times 2, 4, 6, 8. So 2 and a half times 8 is going to be 20, right? And then half, because it's a triangle, so that's actually going to be minus 10. So it's going to be 24 plus 6 is 30. Minus 10 is 20, plus another half. I think your answer is C, 20.5. Lots of people got that. That's good. How do you feel about multiple choice? Yeah? I know that when I went to the university back, way back in the 80s, you know, big air, acid wash machines, all that stuff, hey, um, all of the physics uh, exams were all multiple choice. I'll we'll have to find out if that's still the case. Like every single question? Every single question. So, like, no what do you do more than, like, A, B, C, and D, right? Mm, quite often it was only A, B, C, and D. And some of them would be none of the above, all of the above, or, yeah. So you just have to do the work and then... Pick the right one. And if your answer was not wrong, so take a guess. I guess, yeah. I should double check and see if it's still like that. Anyone got an older brother or sister taking science at the university, Manitoba? No? Okay, 8 is to 9 seconds. So we're talking about slope at 9 seconds. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're talking that straight line right there. So you're simply finding the slope, which is down 1, 
two, three, four, five, but each one is two, right? So it's going to be minus 10 and over 3, which is minus 3.3 C. No. I mean A. <laughs> oh, yeah, those university guys love to do stuff like that, too, where they put the same, right? One negative and one positive. They love to do those things. So. Well, yeah, if you're looking at this, right, even if you don't know, there's only one of those that's negative, right? You don't even have to do the work. Eight ints at 14 seconds. So we're talking about right there. You got to draw a tangent line, pick two points, find the slope. The best answer, well, it's going to be positive, so it's either going to be B or C. C is the correct one. Now, would you get an answer on a tangent line? Might you get like 1.5? You might, right? You'd have to pick the closest one. You'd have to realize that it's not going to be exact on a tangent line. V inst at 2 seconds. Oh, V inst is awesome. It's easy because you just read it off the graph, right? So that's going to be... V bar from 0 to 4. Oh, yeah. How do you find V bar? You got to take the area divided by the time. And we know the area is already 24 divided by 4, 6 meters per second. V bar from 0 to 10. Oh. Well, that, that's okay because I got to go back to what was it? Twenty point five yeah. divide by ten. Oh, that's easy. I can do it in my head. Two point zero five, I guess, right? Or two point one. Yay! We're gonna do some questions that you've already seen in grade eleven. Okay, they're all, I just pulled them right off grade 11 worksheets, so you've seen them already. It's just a review of how to do some problems with solids. So that's kind of the target there, right? Review uh, physics 30S formulas and technique techniques, and those are the formulas. V bar equals D over T, V bar equals VI plus VF over 2, delta V is VF minus VI, and A equals delta V over delta T. Okay. So, some steps. Read the question once. Read a second time, identifying quantities and what they represent. Some people like to write like VI equals whatever. Some people just put the little VI above the number if you want to highlight. Whatever works for you, right? But I would encourage you to read it at least twice. Identify what the question wants you to find. You can't really do it until you know what you're trying to find, right? And then I always suggest work backwards through formulas to develop what I call the roadmap, right? The steps. And you all know that as we went along in grade 11, the steps got more challenging, right? Or there was more and more steps. I hate to break it to you. More of that comes. Bigger steps. More of them. Right? We're building, just like the pyramids. Did I show you the pyramid video I did, right? It's just. You didn't show the second. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You didn't show the second. Oh, you're right. We're going to do inverted pyramids, though. We're going to start with like single ones and we're going to go up like this. Well, that's how it's going doesn't sound right. How come? You ever seen those big towers? I always wonder this. I really want to know. You see those big cell towers and they think they're like tall and they're straight and they get right to the bottom and they go like this. Why are they going down the bottom? Well, because of the tension on the line. And then they got two supports going down. Well, why would it just go straight down? Why is it good? Then they only have to build like a Oh, a smaller foot. Oh, I think you might be right. I think you might be right. The big cell towers at the bottom, they go like they go down, like they go they taper down. I think that's right. So they take up they probably have to pay less rent. No? Yeah, I don't think I would really tower? You know the one um the hydro hydro poles are like yeah. the ones that they're building right now are pretty good example. Oh yeah? Because they're huge and then they just go down. And then they go down to nothing. Like a foot a meter by a meter. Interesting. Anyways, I'm not sure how we're gonna talk about that. Okay, so here's the question. Do you guys have this question? Excellent. Okay, so let's do these. I'm going to spend some time doing stuff with you just to sort of remind you how this works, right? Some of you will say, oh, yeah, I can do this, and others might struggle a little bit, but that's okay. So the guy's name is Miles to go. Miles for laughter, yeah. Traveling along Lake Street, 25 meters per second, 
Miles accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. Determine the distance traveled by miles in 10 seconds. We are solving for the distance. distance. He's traveling along at 25, and then he accelerates. So that 25 is actually our initial velocity because the velocity is changing, right? Miles accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. A equals 2. You're solving for the displacement. And the time is 10 seconds. Okay, now the only formula that we have with a D in it. So we need to find the average velocity, but we don't have average velocity. We only have VI. We don't even have VF, do we? I do have acceleration, though. I have acceleration and time, right? So that means that I could do that one first, and that's going to give me delta V. And then once I got delta V, then I can find the final velocity. And once I have final velocity in VI, then I can put that in there. And I can find that, and then that's going to go in there, and then I can find that. And there's the steps. Yeah. I should do that for everyone? Is that what you said? Well, that would sort of be defeating the purpose, right? The point is for you to be able to do it. Okay, and now you're doing it on your own? Sure. Change of velocity is 20? Final velocity, right? Did you get average velocity of 35? Did you get 350 meters for your final answer? Oh, he's already at number two. That's probably about almost as challenging as I got in grade 11, right? Yeah. Well, it's just with the one with mine. Yes. Okay. Sure. Is this the one with two ants? No uncles? Hey, I've, I've like been sitting around the house all summer long. Just it, just waiting. Yeah, just kids are like tired of me making jokes at home because of it. Stop. Two ants race across the entire length of the top of Wheaties box at a constant speed. The box is 34 centimeters long. One ant travels at 4.6 centimeters per second. The other at 3.5. The fastest ant will cross the finish line first. Obviously, how much time will pass between the time of the first one ant that crosses the line and the second one? So you have to find really time one, time two, and then. Subtract it, right? We're talking. Are these ants traveling at constant speeds? Yes. Yeah. So we can we can use v bar equals d over t. Now the fact that it is centimeters per second is that a big deal? Shouldn't be. I don't think. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're all the same exactly. So the average velocity for one ant is 
4.6. The box is 34 centimeters long. Oh, yeah. Now I remember what the problem is with these. The classic, do I times it or do I divide it? Okay. What do you do when it's on the bottom like that? You do the old switcheroo there, right? So T is equal to 34 divided by 4.6. And you're going to have to help me out. So that's going to be 7.4 seconds. Now, how do you do ant number two? Exactly the same thing. Nine point seven seconds. Two point three meters a second. Between the two, right? Oh, not meters per second. Sorry, not meters per second. Two point three what? Seconds, right? Gotcha. Uh, he's kind of coming back to you a little bit. Do you want to try one on your own? Melt in your mouth. Why don't you guys try this one on your own? I'll give you like four minutes. Do it here. Okay, so we got Milton your mouth, hurting to his workplace at Chocolates Incorporated when he observes a multi car pile up on the highway. Milton is moving at 33 meters per second. His actor legend can accelerate at minus 8.5. Determine Milton's braking distance while braking to a stop. VF is zero. The initial velocity is 33, and the acceleration is minus 8.5. But you need to get distance, you need to find average, so to find the average velocity, you're going to have to go V bar equals VI plus VF over 2. The initial velocity is 33, the final is 0, divide by 2, uh, 15, 16 and a half, right? Okay, and now we got to find the time. Find the time. Well, actually, you also have to find delta V, although you should be able to do that in your head because it's going to be 0 minus 33, right? <laughs> like the, the change in velocity has to be minus 33. And now you can go A equals delta V over delta T. So minus 8.5, the delta V is minus 33. We're going to solve for time. Um, it's like a little less than four. Three point one. Three point eight eight. Three point eight eight seconds. And now you're going to take average velocity and time and combine them together. D bar equals d over t. 16.5, solve for D. So you're going to multiply, right? 16.5 times 3.88. And what do you get? Like about 70 something, rather? 64? 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. 64. Okay. Okay. Oh, absolutely, John. Yeah. It's always about show work, yeah. What do you look at the brown and You know, I, I usually try to say um, whatever is, what if there's if there's zero decimal places given in the question, well, there's 8.5, so I would say go to 2. But again, if I see the work and you've done it all, I'm not worried. I can make that go. Okay? Is it all starting to come back to a little bit? 
Okay, I know there's not a whole lot of time left. I think what I'm going to do is because these sample questions are kind of broken into two parts, so I'm going to give you some time. I gave you the first sheet. You're going to find that the first ones are really super easy. Like these ones, I pick like the easiest ones I can find. Okay. Right? So this, I'm not saying do them all. If you think you need some practice, go ahead and do this. If you think you're good, Watch Netflix. I don't care. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow I'll do the last few samples and I'll give you some more time to work. So that means on Wednesday, no, Wednesday I will do the formula derivation. Wednesday. I'm not here Friday because I'm away with football, so I'm going to get you to the point where you guys have something to run on on Friday.